Okay, welcome everybody. This is uh, St. Lucie free webinar yet again, and uh, what we're going to talk about today is writing options. Uh, and obviously, we do have a bunch of veterans here uh, in our uh, attendee list, but for the new guys who uh, haven't really uh, joined us for a webinar, uh, my name is Anan, aka St. Lucie, and uh, we started, you know, teaching education a couple of years ago, and now, you know, we have a full on 12-day course? Yeah, 12-day course on everything about options and tape reading. Tape reading is one of the things that we really do focus on, and we do understand that a lot of people don't have the time uh, to really put into learning tape reading. Obviously, you do have to be pretty active. So for this, we've actually developed a new product uh, that seeks to go after tape reading from a different sort of perspective. And uh, just to brief you guys about this new product, I'm going to give it over to our new guy, Zachary Musso. Sweet. What's going on, guys? Some of you might know me as uh, the Young Buck. I'm a contributor and have been since October of 2012 on the Sang Lucci site. Um, for those of you that don't know me in depth, I'm still an undergrad. I'm going to be a Bentley senior in the fall. I'm finishing up my final year there, which is pretty crazy. And I've been training seriously since 2010. I started with Futures fit in a little bit to equities and have now caught the equity options bug thanks to these guys. Indeed. Um, so what I do for the Sangucci team, not only do I you know, do product sales and business development, but I'm also working on this product and have been working on this product for the last you know, couple weeks. And we're going to roll it out to you because I struggled when I hit college to try to find a trading strategy that worked with my class schedule. Um, I've been able to sort of finagle classes around now where I can just get evening classes to do it throughout the day. But for the first two years, I didn't have that opportunity. So the one thing that I tried to do is create a variety of different strategies to put together um, to kind of get that nice intercommingling feel where I could sit at the desk for an hour and a half, uh, whether it be at the open or whether it be at the close, and be able to position myself properly. So the purpose of the course is to get you guys that are in those nine to fives, to get those college students out there that are struggling with your class schedules, and to get people that are you know, doing their own business ventures or doing things on the side that still want to take advantage of the markets, this is for you. This is why we're doing this, this course and this product. So we're going to have a webinar about it, the whole introduction for it um, with regard to market profiling, a variety of different other strategies, you know, sector rotation analysis, got some good stuff on there. Um, next Tuesday, so July 2nd, two days before that phenomenal celebration of American freedom. Um, so we're going to post a link up there for you guys in a little bit. Uh, if you sign up for it and you make it, that's fantastic. If you sign up for it, you can't make it, you know, something comes up. We do know that you guys are busy, and that's why we're creating this course in the first place. You're going to get a recording of it anyway. So we'll send that link out, but I'm going to pass it back to Lucci and the rest of the crew so you guys can get on your writing options. Lucci and Zach, give a little quick one-minute breakdown of market profile. Sure. Actually, Zach, I'm going to let you <laughs> in on this. Sweet. I like that. Generally speaking, I mean, market profiling is something to me that, you know, if you talk to any, like, real tape reader and real trader, uh, they'll just kind of look at it and say, okay, well, this is, you know, this is how I look at the markets, and I use the tape to come to these same conclusions. Exactly. But market profiling is sort of an easier way uh, to come to similar conclusions exactly. as the avid tape reader. Tonight. Exactly. So I, uh, I did some training last year um, at S&P Capital and you know, learned that tape reading style. Before I did that, I actually developed a pretty unique skill by reading a variety of different books and just looking at it from the future standpoint. But you can also look at it from an equity option standpoint and even an equity standpoint. It's that visual breakdown. Instead of looking at volume over time, you're looking at you know, volume over price to see those different types of price points that are unique and important. And you can pick that up from reading the tape, you know, looking at that time in sales, looking at that level two like you do, right. and like I do as well, but it's helpful for that visual. It's that stair-step process that instead of just going from straight technicals, looking at that chart, all the way to, you know, tape reading, that right. jump is tough. Right. So to make it a little bit easier, we give it that market profiling edge, right. we allow you to get that visual interpretation, and then you take that next level to tape Very reading. nice, very nice. And to, and, and to answer one of the questions that we just got, uh, it is a Sang Lucci class that is being taught by, by Zach. And, you know, we're here vetting all the strategies out and talking about it, you know, in general to make sure it's a polished product for all of you guys. 
Yeah, guys, and, and as Zach said, you're going to have more information in the webinar next week, but this is going to be um, a recorded class, right? So it's just going to be sort of like a, uh, a video library. The price point is going to be way lower than the 2500 the two grand that we charge for for the 12 day um, and there's also going to be you know some portions of it that are taught by Peter you may get a surprise you know 30 minute breakdown by by Lucci if we can convince him to stop you know the models and bottles stuff and come <laughs> teach some courses so. what you guys <laughs> models and bottles <laughs> what you talking oh, about man. All right. Let's get started with screen writing. yes let's get started with writing options so the first thing this. we want to discuss is what the hell is writing options and how the hell do you do it and why would you do it? Well, just to explain it to you, just sort of in general, uh, right now I'm actually long these Amazon July July 300 calls, right? And you take a look at the stock, and the stock is like a good 25, 30 points away from that strike price, okay? And then you also got to take a look at the time involved. So when is the July expiration? That is about the 19th. So you got about 15 trading days, maybe another couple here and there. So 17 trading days left for this thing to head towards $300. Now, let me ask you guys a question. Would you be a buyer of this option? Meaning, would you bet that Amazon is going to go to $300? Or would you bet against it? Now, go ahead and throw it into the questions. What do you got? Would you bet with it? Or would you bet against it? And, and what I'm asking is if Amazon will go to $300. Okay? What do you guys think? Mustafa is saying against it. John is saying against it. Paul D is saying again. Hey, guys, come on. Come on. I'm long this thing. Come on. How do you think that makes me feel? <laughs> All right. So Miguel against it. MG against it. Denny is the only one with me. Denny Crane, you are the man. DMAX is saying it will, but when? Okay. So there goes your whole uh, discussion on writing options. Okay. Now the question is, do you want to be long the option? Or do you want to be a seller of the option, meaning you're betting against it? So if all the people are sitting here, uh, similar to me, buying this option for 70 cents, hoping that Amazon can go to 300 by expiration, you know, these are all the people that are betting with it, okay? Now, depending on how Amazon acts, depending on how the underlying stock acts, they're going to either pay more for this or they're going to pay less for this, okay? So that's where the whole object of selling comes into it. So now, picture yourself, and you're saying, okay, you want to write this option. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull up a chart of this actual option, just so that you can see how it looks on a longer uh, uh, time frame. And for guys that don't know what writing an option is, you're literally going short an option. Exactly. Okay? You, just like stock, you can buy a stock, you can also sell an option. Okay. When you sell an option, it's literally you're betting against the price going up. That's right. all you need to think about. Right. Okay. So now let's take a look at the past couple months on this Amazon option. Okay. Now, as you can see, it shot up to three bucks back here beginning of June. So this is like June 8th, right? So we take a look at June 8th. Where the hell was that? It was right here. Right? So everybody's all bullish. By the way, what was the market doing at that same time? So we take a look at what June 8th was doing. So, boom, you know, the market was going higher. It looked like we were going to retrace. And then they pulled the rug out on everybody. We're going to talk about this in a second, okay? So now, everybody that was trading those Amazon calls was all gung-ho because this option looked like it was going to the moon. She's going to 300 bucks, and, uh, and we're going to get paid. It's going to be a big payday. I'm going to make a million bucks and pop some more bottles and models, right? So we can do all that. Now, what happened? market, they pulled the rug, and look at the value of this option. Now, notice the stock is only four points less than where it was, but look at where the option is, right? The option closed at 60 cents, 60 cents from up here at $3 and change. So there's time decay involved, there's sentiment involved, a lot of other things involved with, um, you know, with writing options. But essentially, guys, what writing options is, is you're betting against the strike and you're also betting against it happening within that certain time frame. Now, you're obviously going to have to handle a lot of fluctuations. I mean, if you write this option down here, let's say you wrote to me, right? Let's say I'm out there grabbing up these calls like crazy, and you're on the other side writing those same options to me. Who's going to win? Well, 
it's, it's kind of a battle because remember, the price of this option could spike higher if uh, Amazon goes through 280. So you might see a, a quick blip up to a buck and a half. And then what are you going to do? You're, you're, you're short from 60, 70 cents. Are you going to hold it? Are you going to, you know, what are you going to do? So a lot of the same issues that you have trading uh, long options, you're also going to have those shorting options as well. But in general, guys, when we're talking writing options, you are shorting these options and you are betting against the strike price, also against anything happening uh, within that expiration time. Okay? Now, what Pete is going to tell you is some of the restrictions to writing options. We're going to talk about account size, we're going to talk about margin, and all that kind of stuff that relates to shorting options aggressively. And guys, the, that's, that's one of the biggest points about uh, writing or selling options, okay? And uh, you are allowed to sell naked, okay, to a certain extent. So pretty much there is something called the Options Clearing Court hairline, okay? And that hairline is pretty much where they say you cannot use any more margin and you have to hedge. Okay, so let's bring it back to the idea of shorting in general. When you short stock, you are borrowing shares from a broker and you're selling into the open market. All right, so you're borrowing something, meaning technically you don't really have the capability of doing it yourself. All right, so you are borrowing from someone else. The same thing with options, you are borrowing. When you borrow, you are on margin. Right. Okay, you're, and you have to understand how much margin you're using versus how much capital you are using. Uh, usually a lot of these brokers who see like the smaller accounts under even $50,000, they will only allow you to go in credit spreads. Right. Um, and this means that you have to be hedged at all times, that you cannot actually lose an X amount of dollars because you are hedged. And when I say hedged, we're literally saying that, uh, say we're looking at this 300 call and uh, you want to write it, you want to sell it, uh, but you have to stay within your uh, OCC hairline, what happens is that they're going to tell you you actually have to buy the 320 call. Okay, So that's, that's a whole other conversation about credit spread writing and all that kind of stuff. We, we talk about that in our course. So you know, if you guys have questions, there's a couple guys that have questions about it already, shoot us an email about it. It's a whole other conversation itself. But essentially what you guys need to understand is that you are going to be met with serious, serious margin issues when you are writing meaning that it's only worth it when you have a sizable account to actually take advantage of it. This is what the big boys do. They are always selling options. You don't see very many big guys out there out there that are actually buying options. All right? Most of them are selling because they have a big enough account size to do it. And you also have to think about the idea that 70% of options all expire worthless. So in addition to that, I'll turn this back over to Lucci, and he can start talking a little bit about, you know, uh, the weekly options, what happens when you get towards Friday, right. and why it's a ticking time bomb when you buy, when you get closer and closer and closer. Yeah, so we're going to do, we're going to do a nice example for you, and actually it's uh, a quite funny for me, but it, uh, it also sucks for a lot of the retail guys out there. Now, um, this is something that I do kind of in my class, uh, you know, but I've recently started to do it. Uh, just with a lot of the, 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 the free members of the Twitter people out there. Uh, you take a look at this Google or a lot of, actually most stocks uh, that, uh, you know, that, that experienced a significant sell-off from Thursday and Friday of last week. I mean, let's face it, most retail money got trapped going long here for fresh all-time highs. So if you take a look at any chart, it doesn't matter whether you were looking at Bank of America or whatever it was, Goldman Sachs, whatever. Um, you know, these things made a significant move back to the upside, uh, and then the rug just got completely pulled on everybody, and uh, most people were stuck in the calls, okay? Most people were stuck in the calls. So now, what I'm going to show you here is a Google options chain of a lot of these out-of-the-money options, and, and specifically calls, uh, and how the premium sort of moved around from that Thursday reversal. Okay? And then you really see the opportunities that are available when you are writing options. Okay? It's a completely different strategy and a completely kind of mindset that you need, but there is quite a lot of opportunity. So let's take a look at this Google uh, 900 call here. And I want you guys to take a look at it for the last seven days. Okay? Now remember, this option was open uh, you know, from, from last Thursday. Actually, it was even before that because Google opens weeklies. 
uh, you know, m uh, weeks in advance. Okay. So key thing to look at here is take a look, <laughs> take a look at June nineteenth. All right, June nineteenth is is right is right here. Okay, stocks at nine ten. All right, you would be uh, any person would be would be considered crazy to write this option at sixteen bucks here. Because it looked like we're going to the moon, right? It looked like we're completely going to the moon, and then all of a sudden Bernanke comments and all that kind of stuff crash the markets, okay? But now picture retail. What do you think retail is doing right here? What do you think the dumbass retail trader is doing? And apologies for saying dumbass, but uh, most retail traders are dumbasses, let's be honest. So what do you think retail was doing here, okay? And I'm asking you guys, I'm asking you guys. What do you guys think retail money was doing right here? What do you think they were doing? Lucci is saying buying based on $1,000 price targets. Chrissy is saying buying calls. Pauly D is saying buying. Absolutely. You got, you got everybody buying out of the money. So you take a look at this 920. Take a look at this 920, and you'll see the same thing. Okay? Uh, let's see. Let's see. We'll go back a month. Give me one second, guys. Uh, looks like we can't get it. Here we go. So here you go. <coughs> What's we what, what's weekly's doing here? Okay, what, what what are the retail traders doing here? Stocks at nine ten. Remember, this Google can move. Now remember, it's a Thursday. Okay, it's a Thursday. Actually, sorry, it's a Wednesday. It is a Wednesday. Okay, this thing's got two days left until expiration. People are willing to pay six freaking bucks for a nine twenty call. It's not even in the money. It's sixteen points out of the money, but just because of the action, retail money wants to buy like crazy. Okay. And most of them, they get stuck up here. They get stuck up here. And now look at the room, okay? Look at what's happening now. We'll take a look at the, the last five days, okay? Look at the room here for, uh, you know, if you were to short this option to go into expiration, okay? Now, remember, this is Friday of last week. This is Thursday of last week, okay? So the stock was still around 900 bucks. So they were still unwilling to pay a decent amount for this thing. But look at the time decay. Just sap it out completely sap it out. The one day where it just shot below 900 and then just tanked and then look at it after it. Nobody is giving this thing any 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 attention whatsoever, okay? Now we go back to the 900 and you'll see the same thing, okay? And then you can keep going down 890s and even go down even further, okay? So uh, let's see if we can get this one up. All right, now here's the five day. Now notice this one was obviously a lot more expensive because it was sort of in the money still. Uh, ten bucks down to look at this. Look at look at this. Okay, so for the tape reader who understands sentiment and who understands how you know and who understands price action and all those kind of theories and really can follow a stock's movement by just gauging sentiment, um, writing options is a dangerous. It makes that person a dangerous man. Okay, simply because look at all this premium here, six bucks, five bucks, even three dollars, or even if I'm getting a dollar in premium and I'm selling, let's say, a thousand contracts, I'm making what? I'm making a hundred grand right there just betting that it's not going anywhere. That's it. Now, the beauty of writing options, which actually we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna touch on uh, uh, in a little bit, but the beauty of writing options, okay, is that you can take advantage of non-movement which is what the summer is going to be all about. It's going to be a summer of non-movement. So you know what that means? That means the retail dumbasses out there that are just buying uh, you know, these spike ups and these options, what do you think is going to happen to them? What, what do you think is going to happen to them? They're going to be buying these little spike ups, a buck and a quarter, they're going to they're sit there and hold it, and what's going to happen to them? Those options are going to wash out to nothing, to absolutely nothing. Both sides of the trade, calls and puts. So then what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Most retail money is sitting there trying to buy these options in the hopes that they can sell them higher. That's what they're trying to do. Most of them, they're going to expire worthless. Okay? And now with the advent of the weeklies, you know, the, 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 the writers have really been able to take advantage of this game. Okay? And that's simply because there's so many more contracts to write against. Okay? And if, if, if an option has a lifespan of seven days, okay, and you're looking at Google's and the price lines, and let's say you're going 30, 40, 50 points out of the money, these things have considerable premium there. And most of that premium, what do you think happens to it? 
Do you think it get, you know, do you think retail money who is going long these options actually make money? No. Most of the time they don't. So 30, 40 points out of the money on these weeklies every single week, they're going to nothing. They're, they're going to absolutely nothing. So you go up here 30 points on Google, what do, what do you see? You just see cents, pennies in premium. But, you know, a couple of days ago, these things had 50 cents in premium, maybe a dollar in premium, okay, depending on how far out you went. And then if you go to the put side, the same thing, okay? So all these things have value that just saps down to nothing, and the writers have really been able to take advantage of the weeklies uh, simply because there's just more opportunity out there. And just to throw, uh, <clears throat> for you, since we do have some guys in here that have uh, <coughs> somewhat sizable accounts, what we want to do is sort of address the, uh, oh wow, somebody's at S&P. Um, somebody, somebody, really what we want to address is the market environment in addition to your writing. So there's a, there are certain situations where, for instance, this giant move up here, you should be buying this entire thing here because you could right. buy an option for two cents and turn it into a buck, okay, if you bought it at the right times. This is what tape reading allows you to catch. What tape reading also allows you to do is call out this nonsense when it, when it just starts oscillating back and forth in huge ranges. When it starts going back and forth in huge ranges, you know, the tape will tell you bullish one day, it'll tell you bearish the next day. It's a whole bunch of nonsense. And just by you saying, oh, it's nonsense, it's really going to mess with your psychology in being able to stay in the trade. So think about writing in the terms of, uh, the odds are in your favor because all you have to actually bet on is that the price is not going to get there. Okay? Obviously, you know, the, the price can oscillate back and forth. Uh, the P&L can oscillate back and forth. But essentially, at the very end, you are the winner if you can make it through all this chop right. and that your stock never went to 840 and your right. stock never went to 920. Right. Okay? And um, especially in summers when times are really, really slow, there's a whole bunch of chop and consolidation. These are the best times to be writing. And uh, just to sort of emphasize the, the different types of writing, um, you know, you could be a guy who doesn't want to really trade what's inside and wants to write on the outside. So you're like, okay, it's, you know, the, the likelihood of XYZ stock hitting 830 is relatively low. What I should do is I should probably write those and kind of sit on it for the rest of the week until they decay. You could do that with the credit spread, you could do that naked, whatever the whatever you want to do, that's a relatively good idea, all right? Um, and that's a very good um, rule of thumb to start off with writing. Just write the outsides right. where you know that the price is not going to get there. You're not going to get a lot of premium maybe, but at least you are understanding the concept of writing something to decay, meaning that you write it one day and you want this thing to go to zero bucks, because one, you don't want to spend the commissions on executing another option, and two, you uh, you want to take advantage of time decay. Those are the best writing opportunities. And just to get into something a little fancier for guys in the, out there that are like exploring fancier uh, option strategies. Fancy. So when you have like uh, when you have these giant moves around, right? Like this is a huge move down, and we're technically getting a. Uh, uh, a huge move up here from 156 all the way to 160. That's a pretty big bounce, okay? We might even see a little bit tad more till we, till we puke a little bit. Right. But what you want to understand is that um, when you're writing, you're also writing not to cave in the position of your stock, but you're also writing something called volatility. And I don't want to have to get into volatility in this, but essentially, um, you know, again, this is something advanced that we talk about in our courses, but essentially volatility is the range ability of your stock at those uh, at cert those certain levels. If you made it all the way down to 156, even though you're only two points out, there might be no premium there at all because the likelihood of this continually going down has just decreased dramatically. Volatility is drying up on that side. Okay, So what does that mean? That means that maybe you need to be a little bit riskier and understand the risk reward. Again, risk reward in writing strategy is a little more, a little different than just going long. But essentially, what you could say is that okay, you know, it's going to bounce probably at 156. Even though I'm trading under it, maybe I should write the 156 at this point because I know it's going to bounce really hard and I'm not going to see 156 for a while. Okay, and what that does is that you get a lot of juiced up premiums here. You're literally writing something that's in the money, and you want to trade it out of the money. 
And that's a huge, huge portion. Just to give you guys a little, a little teaser of what we've been working on in terms of new strategies, which you know, uh, is pretty fun, is uh, you look at SPX. Options on SPX are worth so much money on the outsides, all right? And that's all I'm going to tell you. They're worth a lot of money on the outsides. It is up to you to go and check them out and what the heck you should do. But I love SPX, and I love these other bigger names that are, have juicier options. Um, again, you know, you have, to, you have to be able to justify why you're writing it at all. You know, if you're only writing one contract, you should write that one contract for the best price that you can get. Meaning that you shouldn't aim for a dollar premium. You shouldn't aim for 25 cents. Maybe you should aim for five dollars. Okay, because you're putting on risk with one contract. If you're getting bigger, maybe you want to maneuver elsewhere. But again, that's uh, that depends on your account size. So there's a couple questions here. Uh, I want Nikos. Oh. I want Nikos. All right, go ahead. I want Nikos. Uh, okay. So the first question we have was this is a damn good question here. Uh, in the Google situation, why not buy a put? to limit your downside risk instead of shorting the calls with unlimited uh, downside risk, which is obviously the, 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 the question. I mean, that is the question. And the reason why, okay, the reason why is that, is that again, for tape readers who look at, who look at um, you know, opportunities where going long calls or long puts is a good idea and it's an easy trade, Obviously, the answer to that question, Nico, is yes, you should buy puts. But have you thought about most of the time where you're looking at a stock and it's, it's, it's making a move, but it's not making a great move in terms of the actual option, okay? Now, let me give you a perfect example, okay? Now, Google has gone up within the past couple of days. What I want to do is take a look at a call option that you could have played to maybe capitalize on some of the upside movement that has happened uh, in Google, okay? And, and this is just goes to show you sometimes how difficult it is to derive profits from going long a call or a put and how much easier it is just betting against a move, okay? Okay, uh, for some reason I'm not getting anything on this stupid call. Give me one second here, guys. Uh, let's reload this thing. And nope. One second. Let's try it one more time. All right. So this is not working. Let me go back to this option change. Try to get another one. Okay. And this will really make sense to you once I once I'm actually able to show you a particular option. And for some reason, Fidelity's kicking me out and not giving me action. Okay. Here we here we go. Here we go. Okay, so Google, take a look at it for the past couple of days. Okay, now this is specific to Nico's question, and his question is, how come you, know, how come you don't just buy a put during all of this instead of shorten the call? Because when you buy a put during all of this, you're defining your risk. Let's say you put down 20 grand, the max that you can lose is 20 grand. Whereas if you short some calls, you know, something crazy happens, and all of a sudden you're down a crap load of money, okay? valid question. However, when you look at the tape, okay, when you look at the tape and when you look at price action, there's oftentimes days where even if you're right about direction, you still ain't making a dime on the puts and the calls. And why is that? Okay? That's like essential to tape reading and essential to understanding price action and what kind of action you need to get a clean move on your stock. Okay? So anybody who bought calls here, let's say they bought calls in this Google, right? And, uh, you know, to try to capitalize on this. Number one is they needed to be in on the overnight, okay, which most people aren't in. And let's assume that this day, okay, and this is today, Wednesday, you're assuming Google is a long go, okay, and you would have been right. All right, what are you going to do? You're going to play around in this? You're going to mess around in this? That's what you're telling me? Negative, negative. You're not going to come out with a great trade here. Because as a retail trader, you, you're, you're going to be chopping in and out with this thing, and you're expecting a move, which you're not going to get. All you're getting is chop. So if you have a choppy environment, what I'm saying to you, Nico, is that you're not going to be able to get a clean move going long or, or, or going long a call or going long a put. Obviously, if your tape is telling you, holy crap, we're panicking, and, uh, and, you know, this thing is going down and your price action looks good, yes, buy a put, okay? But in situations like this, ma'am, 
You're telling me right now, and Nico, I'm asking you, you're telling me right now you could have made money in this Google today? Tell me right now, could you have made money in this Google today? And if you say yes, you're better than me. And there's no way you're better than me, bro. It's just it's not happening. Uh, okay. Uh, Nico, let me know if that answered your question. Though. Chrissy is saying, what's the minimum premium you look at? Usually because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a freaking cowboy. Um, you know, usually I'll look for like a dollar at least. I won't really go on, uh, you know, 50 cents or so in premium. So usually I'm looking for a significant amount of premium, okay? That's what usually I'm going for. So usually I want to see like a dollar and change in premium. That's, that's what I would write. Um, you know, anything less than that, I need a bigger account. I need an even bigger account. So guys out there who have significant accounts, what you can do is go out of the money, take 50 cents, take 40 cents, write that all day. More often than not, you're going to come out of pocket, you know, with that same 50 cent, you know, premium that you, that you, that you wrote. Um, you know, those penny options that are 20 cents, 30 cents, they're so far out of the money, but they got five days left until expiration. Those are slam dunk rights that you can just collect easy, easy money on it. The problem is, is that it takes a lot of margin to be able to do that, okay? It takes a lot of margin to be able to do that, all right? So, guys, we're also trying to tell you, don't go willy-nilly writing options. Yes, you please. Burn yes, please. Very don't. quickly <laughs> if you just go willy-nilly, okay? You need to understand... Uh, one really good thing to do is just watch one option that is out of the money and watch how it acts day to day so you can decide on what day is the best time to be writing an option, right. what day is to wait for that option to be at the right price right. before you start writing it. And that comes a lot with studying price action. Hence why we advocate for tape reading. That's what we advocate. Okay? Let's take some more questions here. Chris is saying, if you are only able to watch the last two hours of the close, would you recommend writing credit spread weeklies? Chris, uh, what's a good way to answer this question? Uh, this, is, this, is, this is an iffy question, Chris. You don't want to get into the, you don't want to get into the rut of finding a strategy because you only have X, Y, and Z uh, hours to give to uh, the markets. So what you want to do is go for a more swing trading perspective. You want to you, you want to take out of the equation like okay I only have two hours after the close what can I do to make money for that you want to take yourself completely out of the equation there because what's going to happen is uh, because you can't watch it you can't watch you might it get a yeah. margin call midday you yeah have no freaking idea that it's yeah. about to happen yeah so writing if you had a bigger account and, and some leash to give that's probably a good idea but again you should start understanding sentiment, start understanding the tape, and if you can swing trade anything, that means you can write and leave things alone on some days also. Right. So get that down first, and again, we recommend checking the uh, On The Go Trader uh, product that we're going to release. Absolutely. That's exactly for those types of traders right. that can't watch it all the time. All right? Exactly. You should evolve from there and then uh, get into writing, because writing is, is dangerous. It is very, very dangerous. <laughs> it is dangerous. But, you need to play the odds game with the danger, yep. right? The likelihood of something not going somewhere is a lot higher than the likelihood of you getting it right on the dot and being able to hold an option so it goes in the money going long. You can only trade it in and out of it. Okay, so let's take a couple more questions. We're getting a lot, so I'm just going to select a couple, and then the rest of the questions, what we'll do is we'll do a whole follow-up thing and then send you guys all out an email. Uh, so Brent is saying, so Lucia, you don't base it off percentage at all, i.e. 2% out of the money at least. Um, you know, again, Brent, for me, uh, I am a tape reader. So I know my levels. I know what this stock, I know what a stock is capable of just by looking at the price action. So anybody that took a look, and anybody who understands price action and took a look at the, uh, at this stock today, you knew there was no legs for it to do absolutely anything. So therefore, going out, to let's say, uh, you know, and again, this is, uh, what is, what is today, Wednesday? Today's yeah, Wednesday? You wouldn't find premium out. Yeah, there, so going out to, let's say, let's see if we can see, it. let's see how much premium the 900 call or the 900 put is given. So notice this, this thing is already burnt down to zero. Why? Because everybody also understands and is looking at the same thing. They're like, yo, this price action sucks. She's going nowhere. So why the hell would I pay for a $900 call? Who the hell is stupid enough? To pay 20 cents for this, I wouldn't pay 20 cents for this, would you? I'd pay 5 cents. I might pay 1 cent, you know. 
So now you've got to go a little bit further in the money. And remember, I'm looking for premium. So I look at this eight ninety five. I see twenty cents. I say, meh, not in the, not yes. good enough for me. You have to assess there are days you don't even want to write and exactly. not touch it at all. Because again, if you don't have the right timing on it, likelihood of you getting the move is very very low. So again, using a two percent rule, you know that's good for if you're writing earlier in the week. But if you if you really watch movement of stock and options, you'll realize that you need to adjust that 2% rule almost every day. And uh, that's that's one big thing you have to understand about writing options, that you need right. to be flexible and understand, right. you know, in general, ballpark the movement of your options. Right. And actually, this goes to the next question that I was going to take. Mustafa has asked, can you give us an idea about strategies you use when you need to make an adjustment, okay? Maybe when the stock goes against you. This is a great, this is a good, this is great, this is great, because oftentimes, this is what's going to happen to the option writer, okay? So let's say, okay, let's just throw this out there. I'm in this 890 call, and let's say, uh, who, do, who, who do we pick here? Let's see, who do we pick? Brent. Brent is the one who asked the question, okay? So Brent, Brent over here wants to buy these calls, okay? Because he thinks there's going to be a huge spike up in Google because he's crazy and he just believes in it completely, right? So he wants to buy this call, okay? And let's say he wants to buy... 60 cents, okay? So he's got a bid out at 60 cents. Meanwhile, I come around and I say, dude, you're crazy. You're crazy. Everybody in this option is crazy. So I'm just going to write this shit all down to nothing because you guys are just going to get smoked, okay? So I write all these calls. I write them to Brent. I write them to Mushin. I write them to Chrissy. Everybody that's in here, I, you guys want to buy this option? Great. I'll write it to you, all right? So I'm short from 60 cents. You guys are long from 60 cents, okay? Now, let's say he stock. All of a sudden, it goes in your favor, right? It spikes up. Let's say there's news on it, okay? Let's say there's news on it. Google has now sued Samsung, and they're making billions of dollars, so whatever, okay? And then the stock spikes up like five points straight, okay? And it, and it hits like 880 or 882, okay? Now, uh, so to Mustafa's question is, how do you adjust for these certain things? And again, I got to go back to tape reading. So if I look at that spike up, let's say the stock gets to 880, Let's say this option spikes to a dollar, okay? This option goes to a dollar. I'm down in my position. You guys are up, okay? You guys want more money. You guys want more money, so you're going to hold it, okay? Meanwhile, I'm looking at the price action. and I'm looking at it saying, you know what? This is a big spike up, but there's no buyers that are really following it. So it hits 880, but all of a sudden, like, you know, there's no buyers really holding the move. So I say to myself, all right, you know what? Let me adjust down here a little bit, and let me sell some more. So I start writing at a dollar. Everybody, all the retail guys that want this for 90 cents or whatever, I'm writing that too. Meanwhile, I'm looking at the tape. I see there's no buyers to support the move. She drifts back down to 875. Now I got a better cost, and eventually this thing goes down to nothing, and I come out as a winner. However, on the flip side, let's say this thing continued to have that buying activity. What I do, Mustafa, and what you should do too, is you get the hell out and you assess later, okay? You get the hell out of that thing, and you assess you assess the action again. Okay, you got to get to you got to be ready to take that crap off the table immediately. Otherwise, this these things can keep going on you. And meanwhile, you're going to look at it like a three dollar option that you wrote from sixty cents. Okay, and you have no chance of of you know getting back to break even on these things. Okay, so just like when you're long and you have to take your profits or you have to take your losses. Mustafa, you need you need to do this even more so on the right side because, as we said before, this thing can go up to wherever. Okay, you don't know how far it can go up. <laughs> this thing can go up to ten bucks. Okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, if the news was that good enough. Okay. Um, okay, so we'll take one more question and then call it a day. Uh, Mike is saying, "How is volatility?" Okay. Uh, okay, we have a, we have one saying, how is volatility at expiration? Will it drop significantly? Will it be zero? I think you're looking at this from the math perspective. Uh, that question alone here. Come erase that. So essentially, what you need to understand is that uh, when you're when you're working within the money options, there is a behavior of volatility going towards expiration and on the time of expiry or exercise. And then there's also a way that volatility acts at the end of expiration for out-of-the-money options. So overall, what's going to happen is that 
on those all on Fridays, if you're talking about um, the the weekly options, uh, when there's no premium at all, okay, that's because. The delta move capable of the staying is almost zero, but there's a volatility aspect in it. There might be dumb people that are buying at dumb prices, and you can write volatility at those points, but essentially they will all go to zero if they're out of the money. So yes, volatility, again, they have different aspects, but you have to pay attention to whether you're in the money, out of the money, and on which days you're playing. That's all a right. very tough question to actually be able to, to answer on the spot. You'd have to look at a lot of ball curves, and it's 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 kind of funny. Yes, yes, and and again, like if you take our class, we don't we don't I don't I don't preach anything about volatility, anything about deltas, anything about any of that stuff. Okay, well, I dumb it down to the point where it's common sense, and and that's it. You can just do it off of instinct. You don't have to look at okay, what's the implied volatility here? What's this? What's that? Can I make a trade? Can I not? I don't do any of that stuff. Yeah, and the right. good thing about that is that you actually will not be able to make a decision in time if you're looking at implied vol, delta, and gammas all mixed up in there. By the time you actually say, okay, my ball is at a good level, I'm right. a short ball, right. you've missed you five missed. picks on, <laughs> you missed on, all of that. on all of it. So there's no <laughs> point in doing that. What you need to do is be able to learn the tape and be able to learn behavior of options so you can take advantage of it. All right, guys, so we're going to wrap it up. Hopefully, you're in a better position about uh, just writing options in general. And again, you know, we have a bunch of free webinars that already are stocked on our website, which, by the way, I get, I get comments on Twitter all the time, like, is this going to be recorded? Is this going to be recorded? I want to slap people because they're right here, okay? So go to the website. You'll see all the free webinars. This is where you will see... Uh, you know, this webinar that is going to be posted as soon as it's done recording. Okay, so everything here is free. You guys can check out all this information, and if you like it, join the class, and we'll see you in the class. All right? So uh, uh, make sure you're around next Tuesday, too, for the next webinar on our new product, Trading on the Go, guys. All right? Enjoy your evenings. We'll see you soon.